Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to show that e to the x is equal to its Maclaurin series, the sum where n ranges from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. Now, in a previous video, we have already determined that this is the Maclaurin series for e to the x. This is the Taylor series centered at 0. And hopefully, you should see a link on your screen right now to that video if you're curious on how one does that computation. What we plan to do right now is actually prove that e to the x is equal to this Maclaurin series. It's, it's, it's only one question to find the Maclaurin series, but actually to, ask, to determine that these two things are equal to each other is a separate thing, and that's what we're talking about right now. Now, in order to show that e to the x is equal to its Maclaurin series, we have to show that the remainder term, rn of x, which as a reminder, what does this notation mean here in this context, that the function in question, which for us will be e to the x, minus its Taylor polynomial sequence, right? So rn of x is f of x minus its Taylor polynomial. We have to show that this thing converges towards 0 as n goes to infinity. So as the Taylor polynomials converge towards the Taylor series, we want the difference of that with the function to go off towards 0, and that would force that the function's equal to its Taylor series. Because we know that Tn, the Taylor polynomials converge towards the Taylor series T of x. And so if they're equal, then they'll converge to that as well, right? But the only thing is since T of x is the limit of the Taylor polynomial sequence, the only way it could get sufficiently close to f of x is if these two things are equal, right? A, a sequence can only have one limit. And so if something else is, is acting like a limit, you know, if it walks like a limit and it quacks like a limit, that means it, it's the limit as well. And that'll force f of x to equal the Taylor series. That's, what we're, that's, our try, that's our approach here. And the goal here is to use Taylor's inequality, which we had learned about that in a previous video. Taylor's inequality, remember, tells us that the remainder rn of x it is bounded above by m times x minus a to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Uh, and so this is going to be true for all x's that are sufficiently close to a. And so what that means is we have some fixed finite value d. Um, so if you're no more than d units away from the center, a is the center there, this, this applies only to that situation right there. And likewise, we also have that this number m is an upper bound for the n plus first derivative of the function at a. Likewise, where, uh, not, not of a, sorry, of x. Likewise, on this interval. So there's some stuff to unravel right there. So now let's use some specifics about this function we have in play. So first of all, our center is going to be 0 because we're looking at a Maclaurin series. And so statements like this is that we need x to be less than or equal to some fixed value d. Now I want to mention that this thing is an arbitrary number right now. We will eventually allow for d to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But for right now, uh, we're, going to, we're going to keep d as a fixed number. We're going to allow it to get bigger in just a second. So we have to consider x's whose absolute value is less than or equal to d. Great. Um, so the next part is we have to deal with this m right here. What do we do with the m? Well, that comes from this, that comes from this n plus first derivative. And so let's think about that. What are the derivatives of e to the x? Well, if f of x equals e to the x, as we know already, right, the derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x itself. And in fact, all derivatives of e to the x are equal to e to the x, right? And therefore, the n plus first derivative is likewise going to equal e to the x. So if, if x has absolute value less than d, um, let's think about the function, for example. The, the, n, the n plus first derivative, if we were to graph it, it would look something like this. We, we know the graph of e to the x. Uh, let's just kind of sketching it out right here. Uh, we would get a graph that looks something like this. This is just our natural exponential. And so what we've done is we've specified some specific interval, right? If you have d and d, right? So here's d and here's negative d. What's the biggest that e to the x gets in this interval? Well, since it's an increasing function, that's going to happen right here. And this happens at the point d comma e to the d, like so. And so what this tells us is that our m value, m, can be set to be e to the d. 
because if you are inside this interval, negative d to d, the function never gets bigger than e to the d. So that's the biggest value we can use. So we can use m to be that. So now let's look at Taylor's inequality again. The absolute value of rn times x, this will be less than or equal to e to the d times the absolute value of x raised to the n plus 1 power over n plus 1 factorial. So we get like that. Uh, we, get, we get something like that. Now, okay, continuing on, we get this inequality. Let's now consider, uh, let's consider what happens as we allow this thing to go off towards infinity. Now, first of all, I should mention that this, this is going to be bounded below by zero, right? The error can never be less than zero. It has to be, it's probably going to be a positive number, but I mean, it could be, it could be zero. It could be that we're perfect in our calculation here, right? Um, so we're going to try to set up some type of squeeze argument right here, right? A squeeze, a squeeze going on right here for R n of x. A squeeze. So what happens to, what happens to the term on the left? as n goes towards infinity, right? That, that's, that's the squeeze we're trying to get right now. So if we investigate that limit in a little bit more detail, right? The limit as n goes to infinity of e to the d times the absolute value of x to the n plus one over n plus one factorial. Now e to the d, notice it does not depend on n whatsoever. So as a constant, we can bring it out of the limit here. So we get a constant e to the d times the limit as n goes to infinity, you get this absolute value of x over n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Now this limit, um, I'm going to make a slight modification here because as n goes to infinity, so will n plus 1, right? So as n goes to infinity, n plus 1 will also go to infinity. So we can honestly get rid of the plus 1s in the denominator right here. It's not changing the limit calculation whatsoever. We get e to the d times the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of x to the n over n factorial. So a little bit simpler there. And it turns out that this limit is equal to zero. That's an important thing to, to mention here. So we're gonna get we're gonna get e to the d times zero, which thus equals zero right here. So that's an important value to get. And how did we get that? How did we get that this limit is equal to zero? This one can be a little bit of a challenge to do. Um, there's, there's sort of like, uh, there's a couple ways one could try to do this limit. Uh, but one thing I like to mention is let's come up above, right? Let's look at this thing right here. Hmm. This looks surprisingly similar to the limit we were looking at just a moment ago, x to the n over n factorial. If this series is in fact convergent, right, uh, which it is, right, we showed previously that this McLaurin series has a radius of convergence of r equals infinity. That is, it's convergent for all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity, right? X, it'll be convergent for every real number, positive, negative, whatever, right? And so this series is convergent. Now, a series that's convergent, that implies that the sequence actually must converge towards zero. At that, we usually use it the other way around, right? We call it the test for divergence. That the, if the sequence doesn't go to zero, that means the series is divergent. But originally we proved that if the series is convergent, then the sequence has to converge towards zero, right? And so that's the sequence that we have in play right now. Let me erase this. The sequence we have in play right now is x to the n over n factorial. Uh, so com coming back down here, right? The only way... The only way that this sequence here converges, I mean, it has to converge because the associated series converges. So it has to go to zero. So we get this limit equal to zero. So that, that's the first step. So for a fixed, so for a fixed D, remember that's the assumption we had before. So for a fixed D, what we see is that this inequality right here goes off towards zero. This goes to zero. And so then that's where the squeeze theorem comes into play, right? Because Rn of x, it's, it, it'll be greater than or equal to zero, and it'll be less than or equal to zero as n goes to infinity. And so by the squeeze theorem, we get that Rn of x will go off towards zero, but we have to be careful for that. Uh, we have to say that four for the absolute value of x is less than d. So for a finite interval, we can guarantee we can guarantee that the remainder will, 
the remainder will go to zero. That means e to the x is equal to its Taylor series, at least as long as x is not bigger than d. So let's relax d. Let's let, let's let d get a little bit bigger, right? What if we pick, pick a, d, a bigger d or even a bigger d, right? What happens to that situation? Well, as d gets bigger, 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 pick, your, pick the number in question. As d gets bigger, 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 this calculation here makes no difference whatsoever. It never changes. And therefore, as we take the limit, uh, so if we allow d to approach infinity in this discussion right here, um, then we still get that rn of x will converge towards zero. And therefore, that then gives us the proof that e to the x is equal to its Maclaurin series. So that, that actually confirms this observation here. And so that's, that's a little bit of a, a difficult argument for many students the first time they see it here. So what we're saying is we have a fixed d. We show that Taylor's inequality goes to zero. Um, and then we allow d to relax with the statement that, oh, it doesn't really depend on d too much anyways. And therefore, we get all possibilities, right? And so what we're saying is when, when x is 2, we can set d equal to 2, and that limit will go to zero. So e squared is equal to the Maclaurin series. If we want to do e to the 12th, we allow d to be 12. And then we do that limit. The 12 didn't really matter. You're going to get the Rn of x is going to go to zero. And therefore, e to the 12 is equal to the, the, the series. And you just do this for every value of x, and we can actually do all of them simultaneously. And we see that e to the x is equal to its own, its own Maclaurin series. Now, one other comment I want to make a mention here before we, we stop this video is that what happens if you take the derivative of this function? Take the derivative of this function. This is going to be kind of fun here. Well, the right-hand side, you're going to get the series. Well, by the power rule, you're going to get nx to the n minus 1 over n factorial. And this is going to go from n equals 1 to infinity, right? Uh, because you lose the constant term when you take the derivative. But look at that. You have an n on top. You have an n factorial on the bottom. The n will cancel with this guy, leaving an n minus 1 factorial on the bottom. In which case, you end up with the sum of n equals 1 to infinity, you get x to the n minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial. Now notice that you have n minus 1 right here. If you plug in the first term, n equals 1, into n minus 1, you actually get a 0. And so by an index shift, we actually could rewrite this sum as the sum where n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial, which this is just e to the x, like we saw a moment ago. And so this, this I hope is a good thing to notice here that the Maclaurin series for e to the x is exactly a series, which if you take the derivative of the series using the derivative techniques we've learned for series in the past, that the derivative of this series gets back itself. It's kind of like this interesting thing where you have this like infinite line of numbers, right? This, you, 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 there's this little game, right? There's there's nine in the bed, and the little one said, roll over, roll over, one fell out, right? You know, this, this little nursery rhyme that kids know um, the thing is we have this infinite number of little bears in the bed, and so when one falls out, all of them roll over, we still have an infinite amount. Um, and so this Maclaurin series has the property that when you take its derivative, you get back e to the x, which is a good thing because the derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x. And in fact, some people, when it comes to this, this function e to the x, they actually define e to the x that is, they might say something like, oh, we're going to define a function exp of x. We're going to define this function by this Maclaurin series. And this Maclaurin series has the property that it's equal to its own derivative. So we don't start off with some exponential function in this weird number e. We actually start off with the property that we want. We want e to, we want a function which is equal to its own derivative. It's, it's a solution to a, a very important differential equation. And then once you have that, like, okay, you have this fact. I'm going to clear out some of the stuff right here. You now have this observation that I've created a function using power series so that e to the x prime is equal to e to the x, or I should say exp prime. We have this function, which is equal to its own derivative. Wonderful. We've created a solution to a differential equation. Then you can actually discover from this that it's exponential um, because if you set exp equal to 1, right, there's a number here. Um, and then you can call that number, you'll find out it's rational. You can call that number e. It's a great number. And then from there, you can actually show that exp of x is equal to e to the x. You can show that this function we've created acts like an exponential function. You basically have to prove the exponential rules. You want to show that, uh, you'd want to show that exp 
um, evaluated at a plus b is the same thing as exp times a times exp to the b. That basically, proving that right there would prove that exp is an exponential function, which would necessarily have to be this natural exponential. Now, proving this right here does require doing some algebra with power series. You have to factor it, but you know, and so that, 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 that takes some work to do. But if you actually compare how we did it the other way around in calculus one, um, it, there, there's, there's some fruit to this perspective that we actually create the natural exponential, not as just some arbitrary number, but we choose it because we want it to be equal to its own derivative. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is that an actual exponential is equal to its own derivative. It's a fundamental principle for differential equations. The integrating factor we use for linear differential equations is based upon this observation right here. And so we could have actually introduced this transcendental function by using power series. We created a function which is equal to its own derivative. And so if we can do that, if we can sort of tailor make, no pun intended there, I'm JK, there's a pun intended there. If we can tailor make a solution to a differential equation using Taylor series, like we can do that for the differential equation y prime equals y, what stops us from doing that for other differential equations? And although we will not see that in this series, I hope this is starting to open up your minds the power that a, a, a power series can do. Again, pun not intended, JK really was intended. We can, there's a lot of power to power series. We can use them to, to tailor make solutions to differential equations, much like uh, y prime equals y right here with e to the x.